Hello everybody, this is Bill Smith again, and uh, today I'd like to present some mid-level play on Dr. Terror and on a uh, few operations bases. Lower levels, you should treat this as a preview of what can happen once you get smoke, and mid-levels, hopefully, uh, if you have smoke and you're interested in using it well, maybe this will give you some ideas. So, uh, yesterday's Terror Stage 5 was really, really easy. Uh, the deal with terror bases is that the defenses spawn randomly. So, uh, <clears throat> on on terror base, the tropical island, there's not a lot of room for layouts to vary a lot. But sometimes on volcano base, you get a a T5 where uh, one side is like way less defended than the other. In this case, uh, obvious move with hookahs is to go right. And so, how do you deal with the rocket launcher or the shore? You ask. Well. This is what I did. Uh, my heavies are landing right in the blind spot of that rocket launch. Uh, you know, I did the math in a boat of heavies about the same level as your Zookas has something like one ninth the firepower. Uh, so you usually aren't relying on your heavies for their damage, but well, uh, in this case, they did have enough to get the job done. So here I'm covering my Zookas with smoke. I know they'll take a, a straight ish path to that flare. Uh, Right, you see one Zooka went left around the trees and hit. Okay, clearing the rocket launcher here and shocking the whole cluster. Uh, so I had, I was trying to shock this rocket launcher that I missed. I, I obviously missed it, dropped a med kit on my Zookas. Uh, it turned out that that rocket launcher kind of persisted in firing on my heavies because it had locked onto them first. Anyway, and you see there, uh, flare the mortar, right? Zookas accidentally walked into one of the mortar bombs. Uh, and got killed. That can happen when you flare mortars. I'm not really sure how to prevent that, to be honest. You, you kind of have to watch the, the spacing and you'll get better at that with time. Uh, obviously, if you have the GB, you can just shot the mortars. Uh, but, you know, as I mentioned before, you won't always have the GB. So, I'm gonna fast forward here, but uh, I, I took that base down with uh, minimal casualties. It was it was pretty sweet. Uh, Terra Four was a lot harder. Sometimes, sometimes Doctor Terra's like that. And so, continuing on the theme of rocket launchers close to the shore, uh, I'd like to show one of my recent op attacks on Fluke. So I did this. With uh, no, I'm sorry, I don't want to show that one <laughs> just yet. Uh, I'm going to show one of the better ones first, and, you know, I'll show some of the not-so-good ones later, and we can hopefully draw a few lessons from them. Uh, I'm sorry, guys, bear with me, but... Uh, I'm not usually this disorganized. Well, okay, here is Fluke. You know... This is nuts. Uh, I'll just go through them in sequence, whatever. So, a few days ago, uh, Excel. Here's what I did. Plan was to go right, finish the car from about 3 o'clock. Uh, so, so uh, yeah, 3 o'clock as the clock flies. Barrage the mines on the shore and landed Zuka's right and uh, <clears throat> immediately went under smoke. The, the little trick I used here is that, as I've said before, I'm kind of limited to five shot, five smokes, two shocks, or six smokes, one shock. I was trying to save energy and I just omitted my last smoke because by the time you hit where my Zookas are standing, you are in the neutral blind spot of all the rock launchers. Uh, yeah, so that was a pretty good attack. To be honest, from here, I kind of didn't really know what to do. I should have gone for those boot cannons and, uh, you know, take a bit of GB bomb stuff. Uh, I was trying to clear the mines here uh, manually, but, well, obviously I got uh, mostly killed before I got there. That was, uh, so that was Excel. Low point. Low points, uh... This low point surprisingly easy. Normally there is a big bank of flamethrowers 
inside this uh, thoughts of shot mines. So here I'm just grouping, back flaring to group the Zookas up. So from this flare point I will take a nice diagonal path right to the middle of the rocket launchers. So I'm spacing my smokes out as uh, best as I can. Once I hit that that center point, and see again, I'm missing my last smoke to save energy. I'm in everybody's blind spot. Uh, I think I should have flared the shot launcher earlier, but still got it. Yeah, I wasted a bit of energy. Uh, I should have gone and cleared that square of cannons instead of uh, you know doing that. I wasn't sure what I was thinking. We finished the core from something like um, four or five o'clock. Uh, yeah, so that. That was not too bad. Uh, not too bad, also. Power okay, Core 15. Uh, ah, Wallop is the base I was talking about earlier, where the rocket launchers are pretty close to the shore. In this case, you can't simply land inside their blind spot. Uh, so, so this is—it's only practical to take these things down once you have smoke. Uh, if you don't have smoke, you would have to shock the shot launcher, uh, the nearby rocket launchers, and you know that would be like three shocks just to move into position. It's not practical. Uh, so what I did was I used four smokes. So smoke the entire landing. Once you, If you're trying to smoke the landing, you have to put the smokes as low as they will go. Uh, so from here I just let my Zookas rip because I'm inside the blind spot of all four of those rocket launchers. Uh, I'm not sure why they shot at the cannon. I was counting on them shooting on the rocket launchers because they had higher damage. Uh, so out of energy to shock, I've only got three shocks. Uh, still, not bad. Mission accomplished. I managed to get that last damaged one down with artillery, and I think my colleague finished off the other launchers, and I think we took the base in three attacks. That was pretty good. Uh, Mambo, yes, okay, this is, this was a nice path, but uh, I think the lesson you can draw from this attack is be careful of mines. So so mines have a detonation radius of one and a half tiles. That means if somebody steps within one and a half tiles of the mine, that thing's going to go off. <clears throat> one and a half tiles is half the width of a defensive building. So you see that little zooka there, uh, so what happens is once you step into the mine's uh, detonation radius, this little pause, and then in three seconds, the mine goes off. And, uh, you know, the mines have a damage radius of three tiles. So everybody in a three tile radius, not diameter, but radius, uh, they're gonna get hit. Uh, <laughs> yes, that was uh, slightly embarrassing, but I, I did make it easier for the next guy. Yeah, I, I mean, not much else to say. These things happen. I was counting on not triggering that mine. Uh, yeah. Could be worse. Yeah, I've done worse. <clears throat> and lastly, uh, okay. This attack on circuit board. This is a bit more of an advanced tactic. Uh, so, see that big group of six rocket launchers there? That is pretty hard to get with warriors. Uh, it's inconvenient for everybody because of all these mines. So, you know, all these mines guarding the front. What I did was, you saw I loaded one bullet of riflemen. Uh, those riflemen are there to clear the mines. Uh, I know I'm sacrificing some firepower there, but I I'm letting the riflemen, I'm landing them first, I'm letting them hit the mines and basically take hits from my Zookas. Now, you're gonna see, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna position by these top rock launchers, so this barrage is clearing the mines there. Okay, and I'm just taking a straight path in from the beach. Uh, and, and this is very interesting. Keep it up bit. Okay, it's my intermediate flare. Uh, I'm trying to be as conservative, sorry, as aggressive as I can on the smokes. It was a pretty, I was trying to get there in five smokes. I, I was kind of, uh, I, I kind of messed up the spacing a bit here, sadly. So what you see is I flared north of that cluster of rocket launchers so that my troops are gonna, you know, walk towards that flare. They're gonna head straight. They're gonna hug the walls, sorry, hug the sides of the rocket launchers. And then when I'm, when my gals are kind of above, uh, you know, they're kind of around the top rocket launchers, 
what I did was I flared one there, and then so everybody everybody stops, turns, and targets that launcher. So they're crammed in around uh, the top rocket launchers. They're in the blind spot of the top four. And, uh, you know, had I kept more of my troops alive, uh, you saw that little gap there where everybody died, uh, I, I think I would have done a lot more damage. Uh, that was... That was sad, and uh, being distracted because of that, I was lit in my shock. Uh, I think I put my shot right at the bottom left corner of the bottom left rocket launcher, and that actually gets both lower launchers, both the machine guns, and both the flamethrowers. Uh, yeah, sadly, I have lost too many troops by this point. I had two shocks. <sighs> Man, if I hadn't lost those Zookas to the machine gun, it, uh... I could have got you know, two, maybe three launchers, and then warriors could have gone in from there. Uh, so, so that's a pity, but that's a bit of an advanced tactic. I call it cramming. Uh, I, I've heard one guy refer to it as the Chinese slingshot. I think it originated among the Chinese forums. I'm not sure what the story is, but uh, that's a bit more of an advanced tactic uh, that you can use when there's not a lot of space to stand, you know, instead of having to go bomb down a, a firing position, you, you might just want to think about cramming your troops in among rocket launchers if you can. Uh, you can cram in among mortars, but their blind spot is really a lot smaller. It doesn't, uh, you know, it doesn't work as well. Uh, I think if you do it right, you can get a small group of Zookas to stand just barely in the blind spot of one mortar, but uh, on the ops I do, it's You've typically got a lot of mortars in play, so uh, I haven't seen that done well. I think one time I did it my, on my main account, I took a bit of mortar fire. Fortunately, the mortars fire slowly, so I, I had a bit of time to do some damage. So anyway, uh, I hope that was helpful. I hope that was inspirational for you know mid-level and lower-level players. Uh, for for lower-level Zookas, it's kind of all about just positioning well before you get uh, before you get smoke and you can you know once you get smoke you can really do a lot of damage the game really changes so uh, once again thanks for listening hope this was helpful